Christianity differs in its root ways of Trinity. However, the basic concept comes from the pagan origin. How? Egypt had Amun, Rai, and Tha as three gods. Babylonians had Nana, Samasha, and Ashtar. Yeah, only, no, I don't understand. So you notice understand, the right? deceit. Notice the, the, the deception, the lies, the deceit, the trickery. He mentions three of the plethora of gods in order to parallel that to the Trinity. But now go back to your first example. What was the first example he gave from Egypt? Egypt, Amun, Rai, and Tha. Yeah, Amun, Am 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 and Ra, okay. And Tha. Okay, Tha. So, but he is aware, and those who study pagan religions are aware, these are just three of many gods, and these gods are not, in the sense, eternal, uncreated, or inseparable. Ah. In fact, what I would do is, you ask him, say, I challenge you, can you show me, are these three gods uncreated by nature? Are these three gods inseparable so that they've always existed inseparably together and cannot function independently? No. Some of these gods precede other gods. So that's the first lie from the pit of hell. And that's not just true with the Egyptian pantheon. That's true with the Babylonian pantheon. Now, give me the other example of the Babylonian pantheon. Uh, Nana. Shamashas and Ashtar. Ashtar, okay. Now, Ashtar is the female god. She's the goddess. How, not, how does that parallel the Trinity when he just gave you two gods and a goddess who form a unity but are not eternal, are not uncreated, and are not inseparable? And these gods and goddesses engage in sexual intercourse and at times orgies. And that's somehow the parallel to the Trinity? Interesting. Ashtar. See, that's why I can you, you. <laughs> can you mention can you mention the goddess in the Trinity that we believe in? Because Ashtar is a goddess. So Babylonians are done deal now. Hindu, I already know. He used Hindu Trimurti, but that's yeah. stupid argument anyways. So if you want to explain your audience, that's no, even, fine. Yeah. He said Hindu now, Trimurti, tell us who the Trimurti Brahma, are. Vishnu, and Shiva. Okay, slowly. Trimurti are Brahma. Vishnu and Shiva. Now, is Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva eternal, uncreated, and inseparable from one another? No. So there are three gods that come together to form a unity, right? Uh, in a way. Yeah, but in, in this a way, case, but in the they, case are not, of the, yeah. they are not unity in one. Yeah, no, what I'm saying is no, you don't have to be triune, meaning inseparably one. That's what I'm saying. They come in agreement, like you and I, we form a un unity, but you're not me, I'm not you. We are separate, independent existences. You can exist without me. I can exist without you, right? Right. So in this concept of Trimurti, since you are familiar, Brahma, Shiva, and Vishnu, are they inseparable? Mm, no. Are they eternal, uncreated? No. Have they always existed inseparably from one another? No, and they even fought with each other. Thank you. Say it again. <laughs> they even fought with each other. So they can exist independently from each other and oppose each other, right? Yes. And this is somehow analogous to the Trinity? Uh, no. Moreover, this concept of the Trimurti, historically, when, when is it dated? Does it predate Christianity? Tri Trimurti, or is it after Christianity? Okay, now, that is kind of a little debatable because... No, I'm not talking it's... about whether Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva was believed on by the Hindus before the rise of Christianity. Of course, they're ancient. I'm talking about the belief that they are the Trimurti, that phrase Trimurti, where they come together to form a unity. It came yeah. much later. It, you I know think why it, it came 12th, much later? Yeah, it's it's like 8th eight, eight to 12th, somewhere around that century. Do you know why? Also. Why? Because they came up with the Trimurti to parallel the Trinity. They were trying to compete with the Christianity that already spread and permeated India. Ah, interesting. That's the one Got I wanted it. you to see. You will not find the Trimurti before the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Lord. Okay. Awesome. So what Thank this you. coward did, this tool of the devil, this deceiver did, what he did was he took a later concept that was developed and coined by Hindus to compete with the Christianity that already planted itself and was spreading by the power of the Holy Spirit in order to get Hindus to follow 
a pagan corruption of the Trinity, and they termed it Trimurti in response to the Trinity that was already there and believed on and widespread in India. Got it. Because obviously Hindu believe in so many gods and goddesses that I can't even name right now, but this concept, perfect. Thank you. Yes. Thank so you. Thank you. You see, Jesus. none Thank of God. them, none of them parallel the Trinity. In fact, what you do, you say, coward, I challenge you, and you can say it in your own way. You say, yeah. I challenge you to show me in any pre Christian, pre Christian religion, the belief of one infinite, eternal, uncreated being who eternally exists as three distinct but inseparable persons, however you want to name the persons, but not a, a plurality of gods and goddesses who exist independently and separately, and some gods older than the others who have orgies and produce divine offspring. Oh, my, it's, yeah, exactly. You won't uh, find it. To, now we'll go ahead to these other objections. You won't find yeah, it. Greeks. I want to have, handle Greeks and Romans as well. So Greek had Hegate, triple-headed with Papyri and S uh, Salini. Man, these names are killing me. So wait, a Greek god that has three heads, and that parallels the Trinity, where the Trinity is not a three-headed being because the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are immaterial, spaceless and placeless so the distinction in their persons has nothing to do with bodily spatial distinctions see you and i are distinct bodily and spatially you're separate from me i'm separate from you physically and spatially that's not the trinity so does he think that the three-headed monstrosity in the greek pantheon is parallel to the trinity uh, exactly. Now, That's by the way, when you said three, he, he, sometimes the terminology is very hard for me to follow. What three-headed monster? Uh, Hageta. H-E-G-A-T-T-A. H-E-G-A-T-T-A. H -E -G, say it again. H-E-G-A-T-T-A. Okay. And that's supposed to be what again? That is supposed to be with Papyri, who, who both prays to Salini. S-E-L-E-N-E. Oh, so no, but you said he's three-headed? Yes. So a three-headed monster like the mythical three-headed dog Kerberos, Cerberus of Hades, and that parallels the Trinity? Apparently he's trying to do that. Mm. Yeah, I'm impressed. I'm ready to leave the Trinity for <laughs> Greek paganism. What else? Uh, Romans. Diana, the diva of three. Okay. Diana, a goddess again. With who? Mm. Uh, which is the diva of triform. Diva. So Diana, a goddess, who is the diva and, and union with two other gods, right? Yes. And so these two other gods and Diana parallel the Trinity when they're three separate gods. And these gods resemble human beings in that they have bodies in which they can have orgies and sexual intercourse and get one another pregnant. And that's parallel to the Trinity? Apparently, that's his stupid argument. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm convinced, man. I mean, I'm ready to leave the Trinity for these pagan trinities. Perfect. The way you come out is just awesome. Awesome. So, <laughs> and Persians, according to him, me Ahrua Mazda. Yeah, Ahrua Mazda and... and Athinta and Mithara. They uh, are Mithra. Mithra. No, Mithra. I have no idea I mean, who Mithra, are. right? Mm-hmm. And challenge him to prove to you that Ahura Mazda and Mithra and what was the other one? Because sometimes pronunciation. A N A H I T A. N -A -H -I -T -A. Oh, say it again. N A what? H I T A. Okay. N A H N A H I T A. Nahiti. Yes. Yeah, Nahita. In the okay. Ahani. Okay. Mithra, Anita, Anahita. And Ahur Mazda, I want him yes. to prove these three gods are eternal, uncreated, inseparable from one another, as opposed to emanations of a power that <clears throat> some of these gods are older than others. How is that parallel to the Trinity? Excellent. Excellent. So that is why he started with saying they differ, but the root is ah, of three. So that is, that is why he is actually you see trying the point? to... He tries to... <clears throat> lessen the differences and overemphasize the similarities when the similarities are a joke there are no similarities understood perfect so perfect. he brushes aside the huge differences that show they're not parallel 
in order to focus on superficial similarities, which are not even similar, but are satanic, deceitful rhetoric that he's using to deceive people into thinking the Trinity is found in other cultures. It's not. And here's the challenge. I want everyone to learn this. I want everyone to learn this. Ask these people, show me before the spread of Christianity. Show me before the time of Christ in ancient pagan religions, a belief of one, listen to my language, one eternal uncreated being that ex exists as three eternal inseparable divine persons. Show me that. Then we'll talk. Awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you then save me time. Will, you save me sorry. time from wasting watching this clown because this is an argument used by Joe's witnesses. When I, I heard this argument with Joe's witnesses in the nineties, but go ahead. Okay, got it. Thank you so very much. It was fast and easy. That's good. Then he uses Julius Caesar, who is actually in AD forty four to forty six, if I'm not mistaken. Julius Caesar, a human being born of human parents who is temporal and finite and fleshly, who never claimed to be the eternal uncreated God who became flesh. And that's a parallel to what again? Uh, 1 John 4, 14, because he said that he is the descendant of Aries and Aristotle, yes. the God who has okay, let's become go that. manifested and universal so let's savior go that. of human life. Julius Caesar. I want him to quote where Julius Caesar claimed to have been a pre-existent divine being who then became flesh as opposed to being the sexual offspring or somehow the offspring of a God who himself is not eternal, the God that sired him, who inseminated his mother or somehow caused Julius to be a divine being. And that parallels Jesus being the eternal life, the eternal word, the true God and eternal life who became flesh and then died on the cross to propitiate the wrath of God for sin. And that's parallel to Julius Caesar saving man. How? Did Julius Caesar save man from eternal wrath and destruction? No. Did Julius Caesar offer himself on the cross as a propitiatory sacrifice in order to appease the divine wrath so that we could live forever in the presence of God? No. So again, what did he do? He took terms that are used by two different groups that define those terms differently and somehow deceitfully, satanically impose the meaning of one, of one group on this term upon another. In other words, I define salvation one way, you defined it another way. But then what I do is because you do use the word salvation and I use the word salvation, somehow I show their parallel. How's that parallel? Just because we use the same term doesn't mean we have the same idea or same notion or same definition. I talk about being saved from God's wrath by the blood of Jesus. And you talk about Julius Caesar saving you from, let's say, your calamity. So let's say from hunger, let's say from starvation. And somehow that's parallel to what Jesus did. Not at all. And he was a warrior and he went in and 100,000 got killed. And that by makes him the sin. savior in the same sense that Jesus is. Mm, exactly. Or the opposite, basically. So what's the trick? What I want you to hear is the Holy Spirit guides the conversation. So the trick is that they are using some specific words. That we use in common. It. Exactly. That we use as a Christian uses from these people and trying to say it's paganism. Yeah, and That's I'll give you trick. one more example. Let's assume here. Uh, let's assume. Well, it's not assume they use this, but assume you just heard that, you know what? You have in pagan religions a belief of virgins giving birth to the offspring of the gods, that the gods cause virgins to conceive and give birth, because you'll hear that. They'll use examples. Even Bart Ehrman in his book, How Jesus Became God, it's in his book. Even Bart Ehrman admits there is no parallel to the virginal conception and birth of our Lord. What you find in these parallels is that a god sees a virgin and he lusts for her, and he has sex with her and he implants her with his divine seed to get pregnant with his offspring. So notice the deceit again. Notice the deception. Notice the satanic lie. They'll take the word virgin. Oh, but she's a virgin and she gave birth to the offspring of the God. Yeah, she may have been a virgin before, let's say, Zeus came upon her and had sex with her, deflowered her and implanted his seed in her. That's not the same as the virginal conception and birth of Christ. But again, because the word virgin may appear 
or the, the notion of a woman who's a virgin gets impregnated by one of these gods, somehow because she's called a virgin or is a virgin, that's parallel to what Christians believe? Seriously? Apparently they use that, yes. And that's another profound difference about, among the pagans. Their gods were more akin to human beings, glorified human beings, because the gods and the goddesses were believed to have bodies and they had genitalia. And because they had bodies and genitalia, they would have orgies and sex with one another and human beings. You see my point? Got it. How is that parallel to the Holy Spirit causing the Blessed Virgin to conceive and give birth as a virgin physically without having sex with a man or God coming down and having sex with her? <clears throat> How is that at all parallel to these pagan perversions? Basically, there's no parallel because now the God has a male genital and he yes. is doing that. And here's our belief as Christians, and Christians need to know this. Christians need to know. We believe that the one true God, by his very nature, is bodiless, shapeless, formless, timeless, and spaceless. Why? This is just simply logical. If God created time, space, and place, that means he must have been there before there was time, before there was space, before there was place. Well, if he's there before time, then he must be timeless because time did not exist before he created it. And if he's there before space and place and matter, then by his very nature, he must be spaceless, placeless, and material because <clears throat> space, place, and matter did not exist before he created them. That means the true God, by his very nature, is bodiless, shapeless, spaceless, placeless. So how then can you compare the virginal conception and birth of our Lord Jesus, where the Holy Spirit, who's shapeless, bodiless, spaceless, does not have male genitalia, the Father does not have male genitalia, the Son became man, and as a man, he had a physical body and all the human characteristics without, with the exception of sin, but... How do you then take that view of God and say that somehow it's parallel to the view of the pagan gods and goddesses whose gods and goddesses had physical bodies and genitalia by which they could have orgies, sexual intercourse, commit fornication, and commit adultery. In fact, Zeus was an adulterous pig. Zeus was known for sleeping with married women. And not only that, in Greek paganism, Zeus is not eternal. Kronos created Zeus, and then Zeus ended up killing his father, Kronos, if my memory serves me well. Do you know that? Uh, kind of. I've watched a few videos, movies, basically. Yeah, if I'm, again, I'm going by memory. Thank the Lord for Chef Google. Guys, confirm real quickly. I, I, I don't want to speak off the cuff, but again, I'm trusting that the Lord will protect me from error. Zeus was created by Kronos. Kronos was his father, and then he ended up killing Kronos and became the king of the gods. And that's somehow similar similar to Christianity? Yeah, I'm convinced, man. I'm ready to become a pagan. <laughs> okay, while they confirm what you want, I have the last point, basically. Yes. Justin Martyr, the, the first century Christian apologist, right? He's the what? Justin Martyr, yes, second century. Second century, sorry, yes. second century. Um, his first apology, chapter yes, number 21. Yes, I know what he's referring to. That he's talking to the pagans and saying that what we say is no more shocking than what you believe about your gods and goddesses. You are already there, so yeah, I don't I, have I know, to I know, read I know, it, because so. they're, they're very dishonest and they're very satanic because they don't read the fathers in context. Uh, the particular section, if you read it, what he's saying is, why should it be thought strange? Why should it be thought strange? that we believe that Jesus is God in the flesh and the Son of God, when even you pagans have beliefs that are similar. Justin Martyr's point wasn't, wasn't that, that the Christian faith finds its origin in the pagan myths or that what Christians believe is identical to the pagans. He's saying, if you condemn us for believing that Jesus is God in the flesh, born of a virgin, Son of God, then what are you going to say about your paganness? You see the point? Right. So he's trying to make some parallel and contrast. Yeah, it's them. like if I were to talk to a Muslim today 
And he says to me, well, you're idolatrous because you kiss, kiss the cross. I go, if we're idolatrous because we kiss the cross, then what do you say about you pagans licking the black stone? See, that, that's the analogy of Justin Martyr. See, that's what Justin Martyr is doing. He's saying, how dare you act inconsistently? How dare you act hypocritically condemning us for believing that Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the son of God, born of a virgin, God in the flesh. When you have beliefs, similar beliefs, <clears throat> such as Zeus impregnating women and having children from them, if what we believe is strange, how much more strange is your belief? And if you condemn us, why don't you condemn yourselves? It's trying to say you are acting inconsistently, hypocritically. You're acting like hypocrites. <laughs>